So yesterday I posted this comment on my uh, community post and it got some some traction. Uh, people seem to be interested in this problem that I ran into my 9 to 5 job. One one problem of my back end and people seem to mo mo want to know more about this and how I debugged and fixed it. So how about we read this comment and try to understand what happened and then show you the process of how I fixed it and show you some example code that I tried to reproduce on my personal laptop here. So uh, I wrote, this new backend I built hangs after few requests. Turns out I was leaking database connections from the pool. So new requests were just stuck in the database pool queue waiting. Which is which is a, a very a very simple fix for a very frustrating you know thing that happens right so uh, a lot of people a lot of you guys are like okay how did you fix it did you use you not stat uh, or server logs all that stuff uh, nothing that fancy to be honest right uh, it really all depends on how how well you understand your code so you can find problems faster but how about we actually show you. What the problem was so here is a simulation i'm not going to show you exactly what was the back end because it's from my work but i built something very similar with a to-do app right so here is a back end that uh, i'm reading the list of to-dos and i'm displaying on an html file here html page so we'd refresh the page you get the to-dos you refresh it again you get the to-dos you refresh it third time you get the to-dos fourth time you get stuck fourth time get stuck <laughs> there is no results so what is going on exactly so you keep refreshing and you don't get any any results so the first thing i did was okay what is going on so i went to tools your friend in this treacherous time so when i refreshed i clearly saw that the request is being is, is just pending on the back end so what happened in this case it was pending in my actual original repro case I was behind a reverse proxy. So the reverse proxy, which was in GenX, timed out after I believe 60 seconds, which is the timeout I configured for the backend. If the backend didn't respond to NGINX for X amount of second, please time out. So I actually quickly understood that it was a timeout. Not that the backend wasn't available, the backend was there. It's just it wasn't responding. So the requests are received by the backend, but the backend is getting stuck processing it and doing something i don't know so uh the the next thing i did was just like let's go ahead and restart the back end here's the back end let's go ahead and restart and behold i'm getting my responses back again one two three and four and we're stuck again it's always consistent you want things to be consistent once you have consistent stuff reproducible stuff you can easily debug what is going on the back end is doing something fancy so here's here's the simple back end that i try to reproduce here all right i have postgres on the back end as a database i have express as the front end http server and uh, we have just one endpoint root that says okay to do's query the database and give me all the to do's very bad query by the way right because there's there's no bounding it's if you have million to do's you can return all of them bad idea okay this is just an example showing you stuff so here's what i'm doing here in my particular use case i want i wanted to do a transaction so i need a connection of the database and i need to begin this transaction i need to execute multiple queries in this particular one there is one but you get my point and then i commit and then Here's the thing. This was the problem. This didn't exist before. I was just executing the query and then immediately returning. The client that I reserved from the connection pool was never returned back to the pool. And what is this pool? If you if you if you ask. I made a video about connection pooling. Check it out here if you want to learn more about it. But the idea of a connection pool is is very useful if you want uh to to scale effectively right so you would you would create this idea of a pool and this is nothing but a group of connections of database connections if you don't use this then 
The alternative is to create a new connection every time a request comes, right? Hey, every time a request comes, let's create a new connection to Postgres, execute the query, and then destroy it. Bad idea because you have you have now the overhead of creating the TCP connection, the overhead of establishing a database connection, right? That's an overhead on top of that. And if your security, if you have security on top of your database, that's another TLS handshake. Bad idea. You don't you never create connections in the request itself. So we preheat them instead, right? And uh, the the PG library in Pulse and, and Node uh, allows it allows you to do that. You create a pool and you say, hey, this is your server, this is my password, all that stuff. This is the port, and I want four connections maximum. And this was exactly my configuration. I had four connections. So as a result, you cannot exceed four connections in parallel that are all in use in the pool. So what you do is you reserve one connection from the pool, execute a query, and here's what I did. I never released that connection back to the pool. So the pool thinks that I my connection is being in use as effectively I leaked the connection. So if we debug now, and let's restart the back end here, and then go back, you refresh, you get this debug request, right? Hey, give me a connection from the pool. Got it. And then execute it. All right, let's do it again. And then do another request. Give me a connection from the pool. Right? Got it. Execute it. Notice that we have now two requests in flight that has been fulfilled, but the database connections that we reserved we never actually return back to the pool we never release them so what happened here is you have now two only two connections left from the four because you you leaked them effectively so the third one now says okay give me another connection right you can get it because you have four and then let's do one more that's the final one get it and then execute it we get and that's it Probably we executed five now from the debug session. But now, any request now, look at what it will get. It will get stuck right here. It will never come to this next point. We are now waiting for the pool to give us a connection. And the pool says, shut up, wait. All my connections are being used by other clients. <laughs> Which is not true because those clients are done. Right, but effectively, because Node.js is a single process, single thread, you didn't. It, it's never terminated, so the pool state is out of sync. So the problem was we never actually released those clients back. So the solution is so simple: it's just you have to release those connection back to the pool whenever you're done with them. And uh, obviously, I this line didn't exist in my code and then immediately when i saw the client connect uh i saw that okay that's the problem immediately i know it. i know that was the problem so it didn't take me much more to to find out the problem but uh i'm not and i'm not saying this because i'm, I'm a great engineer or anything like that no because i happen to have a maximum connection if this was not set right if this I didn't if I didn't set this, then the maximum will be, I believe, 20 by default. Then this would have existed on my back and I wouldn't have never known. Another bad thing that I didn't do is I have not set a timeout uh for waiting on a connection from the pool. There should be another timeout that I set. I forgot what it's called, but it's one of these properties. Does it does does this tell you? There you go. I love Node.js. Look at this. Connection string, database, idle timeout. Idle is very interesting. Idle is how long should the connection stay there idle before the pool kills it? There must be a wait. There's a query timeout, statement timeout. There's all a bunch of timeouts here. It's probably connection timeout, right? So there's so much timeouts. I, I should have said these timeouts correctly so that when uh, when a leak like this happens in the future uh, i will never get into the situation again uh ideally when you have single statement like this that you don't need atomic transactions for then you can alternatively use pool 
dot query instead and then immediately do your select what this does is it immediately uses the pool to pick a connection randomly and then execute the query and then return back the query immediately return back the connection back to the pool immediately so that's that's one of the best way when you have like a single query like this right but if you want to do transactions this won't work it's actually bad if you try to do a transactions like this so let's say you you try to do you try to do insert and and an update and another insert right if you start to do this using pool.query bad idea because this will use a connection to pick uh, one connection to execute that query and then immediately commits this will use a transaction immediately commits you cannot roll back uh, this will not be an atomic transaction if you do if you do this obviously so yeah guys this uh, this was the problem effectively this was a very silly bug from my side but uh, it could be devastating if gone undetected and i only discovered it because i had a maximum connections on my backend and uh, if you want to learn more i have a full bag uh, full video i have a full video about database connection and pooling check it out i'm gonna see you on the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye and guys if you enjoy this kind of content make sure to go to database.hosanenasr.com and go get a discount for my introduction to database engineering udemy course i discuss a lot of cool stuff here a lot of details i have over 100 lectures going into the deep of database engineering cool tricks best practices all sorts of stuff and then you guys we have a great community there where we have a q and a's make sure to grab that coupon you can just head to her database thank you so much